Go out after the one who is lost. Luke 15, 4. These words came out of Jesus' mouth 2,000 years ago. He tells the parable of the hundred sheep and the shepherd or the farmer loses just one. Just one. You might think, oh well, I'll just, I'll just work with 99. But this shepherd knows and loves this sheep so intimately that he leaves his 99, which might even be at some risk, to go after that one which is lost. And he searches till he finds him, this little lost one. And instead of telling him off or making him, marching him back home, he puts him round his shoulder. He carries him back and puts him back within the family. And then you know what the parable says? He gets his neighbours and they have a party. And that's what we hope to be doing at St. Philomena House. This is what we're about. St. Philomena House is all about going after the lost one. And we've got a few of them in New Zealand. They could be our own sons, grandsons, nephews, friends, friends of friends, our neighbours. I wouldn't mind betting that m the majority of people here would know of at least one person who is lost. And so often the families aren't the right uh, means of being able to help their loved one for many, many reasons. Just to recap very briefly, for those who don't know anything about St. Philomena House, it's not a new concept. I was led to it in Italy when I was visiting in 2013. It wasn't my idea. Uh, I was told about a wonderful community in Umbria and I decided to go and visit it and I stayed there for a few weeks. Now my experience there in that community, which was run by a married couple with young children, they had a few helpers, a couple of volunteers, and they had about 30 to 40 young people there, mixed gender. This particular community had men and women, and they were the lost ones. But honestly, when you met these men and these women, they had made such transformations of being in community where they felt loved and where they felt a sense of belonging. And that's all really what the human heart wants, is to be loved, and to feel that you belong. I then knew what the Lord was asking of me, that we needed something like this here, because these communities have been so astoundingly successful, tend to be Catholic communities, they've spread right around the world. And, but not here yet, except that St. Philomena is on the brink of opening the door, God willing. It's been a long journey over three and a half years, and it's been a complete journey of faith. St. Philomena House will host men who are lost, not only addictions, men who are lost usually have them because when you're in pain, you need to self-medicate. And the only way you, people who are in this kind of difficulty, they usually go for something that is not terribly functional. So it might be substance, it might be behavioral. And then they get caught and they can't get out. Even if they want to, they get caught. Now there are some places in New Zealand you can go to, run by the state, but they're short term. So the decisive thing about St. Philomena House is that it's a long term residential um, experience in a family of love. That's what we're trying to create. Joy, love, we want you to be here, we believe in you. And they get a sense of hope. Gosh, hope is such an important word. You know, without the hope, that's when you get your suicides that awful, awful moment where you think there's no way out. But there is. And that's what we're trying to create at St. Philomena House. Now, the day is very structured. We keep them busy. They learn life skills. They learn work skills. Um, Jesus is in the house. So long-term, live-in, we don't ask them to pay. And I don't get paid, and none of my helpers get paid. So it is a labor of love, which means that people, it's got a strong message that I've got a faith in Jesus Christ who's running the show and that he's going to do the healing with a little bit of help of people like you. <laughs> so that's just a quick recap. Now I've got some really good news. 
we have our first house guest waiting to come to community. He's an awesome young man. I can see that this guy's going to fly. He's late 20s. He comes from a good family. He's had a Catholic background. But for 10 years, he's got himself into, struggle, uh, himself into trouble and he wants to break free. And he's tried on his own with help where he could go for help for the last two years, but it hasn't worked for him. Now, how did he find out about St. Philomena House? I just love the way the Holy Spirit works. In 2015, I spent six months in Italy living in communities. And two very fine men from Pukekohe, who had uh, been to Medjugorje and seen a different community called Chinakalo function, and they'd been hugely impressed. So they said, oh, we want to support you, Christine, we're coming over. I showed them around for a month. Now, this applicant, I'm going to call him John, that's not his name, the applicant who we've actually accepted, his brother, I'm going to call his brother Peter, Peter sometimes goes up to Auckland University. And he happened to go up this day and Tim and Ronnie were there giving a talk on St. Philomena House. I had no idea about this, by the way. This happened six months ago. So Peter thinks, oh my gosh, that might help my brother. But he, all he knew was my name was Christine, nothing else. So he did a search on Facebook and he found Christine and he found something Catholic. He thought, that must be the woman. So anyway, um, he tracked me down, and, but he didn't call me. What a blessing that was. But his brother, John, called me out of the blue. And he said, look, I've struggled for 10 years. And you know what I said to him? I said, that's fine. And I said, would you like to call now? Yeah, no problem. He called in the interview. And you know what he said to the receptionist? When's your next appointment? When's your soonest appointment? This guy is ready. There's only three things that, that we need. One, I've got a problem. Lots of people go through life and they just won't accept they've got a problem. I've got a problem. I've tried to fix it. And I can't. Will you help me? I'll do it your way. Now, that's, we call that surrender. And when someone's at that step three, honestly, transformation and community, it is exciting. That lost one gets brought in out of the wilderness, comes home, and is loved back into life. So that's the great news. Now, when you get your first house guest, then you know that the Lord is about to give you the address where you're going to house them. Now, um, a very, very generous couple, Kathy and Len Light, you will know them because they were the easy yo inventors. And they have 10 acres up at Waipu Cove, and she is um, offering the use of that land. And we're going through that process of possibly that working. There are a few little hiccups. There's nothing on the land except a tennis court. So if we were to go there, we would need a rental um, property somewhere along the coast within Kui. Whether or not that falls into place, we should know over the next few weeks. And if not, we're still looking for our address. And people like you may know of somebody. Now, the big obstacle that I tend to face is people think, great idea, yes, 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 but I don't want to step out and take a risk. Now, it's because the concept in one's mind is one based on fear. And they think, oh, it's a bunch of crumbs coming. Look, I'm telling you not. I would have this young man in my home on my own. Because the guys who are trouble don't make the phone call. The guys who want to change are willing to do whatever you ask them to do and they'll get stuck in. I've seen it and this is what we fully expect to be our experience here. So the risk is really minimal. That's what I see. It'd be like nothing, it'll be just like any other family. Ups and downs of family life, that's how it's going to be. That would be. And we've got full autonomy about if someone is not suited for whatever reason, we can ask them to leave immediately if necessary. And also it's not a prison, they can come and go. So, the roof. Now I'm going to show you a very short three minute sli um, slideshow on the community in Umbria, the very first community I ever went to in 2013. And I'm going to tell you how they started. It's run by this, this couple. They weren't married at the time, I don't think, but they are subsequently married, got children. And they were living, at, the bishop of the diocese wanted this house. And so they were jammed into a tiny house. But a man who had been to Medjugorje had a huge conversion. He bought them their first property. 
It was an old Italian farmhouse. It was incredibly run down, really unlivable. There were all animals downstairs, and upstairs was never finished. Maybe 20, 30 acres. You should see it today. After 20 years, it's amazing. And so you're just going to get a little glimpse of how they started. Unfortunately, I don't have old photos of how it was, but I've seen them, and it was pretty basic. Anyway, they came under one builder, and the men themselves built the community. What a vision, you know? Can you just imagine how good you feel when you are doing the constructing under the supervision of a builder, and the electrician, and the plumber, and the bricklayer, and all the other people, the tradies that you need? Anyway, you'll see a very beautiful home, uh, and I'll talk you through a couple of the slides. Let's do that now. Thank you, Stuart. You'll also see on the slideshow Tim and Ronnie during their trip in 2015. <laughs> It's just a double click, Stuart, on that on your desktop. While Stuart is um, just uh, showing that, I'll go on to uh, tell you a little bit more. Um, not only are we reliant on completely on divine providence, but also on volunteers. And I did have two wonderful companions, a 70-year-old Sergio from Italy and a young man, 29-year-old Canadian, who came out and have been with me for the last two months. Unfortunately, Sergio has had to return to Italy for family reasons. And after some weeks, I suspect Mitchell got very, very homesick, so he's also headed home for the time being. They do both hope to return in the future, but that's where we're at at the moment. When I share that with you, you know, the Lord sometimes unexpectedly closes doors, but he always opens other doors. And I'd been praying, Lord, give me one good woman. <laughs> one good woman. Anyway, the prayer was answered immediately. I get a, a call from a very dear friend who's um, a fantastic woman. She's worked as a high school teacher in sport for many years and with difficult children. She said, Christian, I'm coming out to help you. I'm coming in the beginning of July and she can come for a few months. Now she was the woman who had the icon of St. Philomena, which is down there at our table, um, right at the back of the auditorium. She had that written for us in Florence and brought it out herself personally a couple of years ago. And she's just can't wait to pitch in and help. But we're also going to need some local support. So, you know, you might know people, you might yourselves be available one or two weeks, one or two months. It's really the body of Christ pitching in to get this off the ground and getting us started, really. It's just started because very soon when you see the guys change, it has its own momentum. And after the guys progress through the experience, first year, second year, we like them to stay in community for three years, uh, they then turn around and help the new ones coming in. Ah, here comes the slideshow. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Stuart. Now, it didn't start off like that. You're seeing a community that's been going for 20 years. But my experience has been and research has been that they all start in poverty, but with the help and the generosity of people who really believe in this, uh, the Lord can do amazing things. And the point is that lives really do get saved. That's what this is all about. Let me tell you briefly about Chinakalo. Many of you will have visited Chinakalo through your pilgrimage to Medjugorje. Chinakalo was started by one Italian nun, one woman. And she also got a house that was completely run down. No doors, no windows, you know, brambles growing. And very soon she had that house overflowing with young men because there was such a need. You know, 35 years on, that community has over 70 houses around the world. See, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He's a multiplier. So we're just trying to get number one off the ground. Hope you'll help. Um, I do have at the table a very short 20-minute DVD, a documentary on the beginnings of Chinakalo. You're very welcome to come and get a copy. It's inspiring. It talks a little bit about how they started and how they've sort of progressed. We've got a little donation box. If you could put a, some sort of contribution in, that would also help us out enormously. At the back, we've got uh, a sign-up sheet with for your details. So if you'd like to be on our mailing list, we send out a newsletter maybe two or three times a year just to keep you um, abreast of what's going on. And we've also, last year I did ask for some financial help. And, you know, sometimes on this journey it gets really tough. You know, I've just done tax receipts for the benefactors. And I just thought, oh my gosh, these precious people, most are coming from the Eucharistic Convention, you guys, thank you so much. Because not only do you believe in the vision, but you've, you've really put your faith in me. And even though we're going up that really steep uphill climb, you know, that's to be expected and I'm not turning back. I can't turn my back on this young man who's come, who wants to come to community, and there'd be many more like him. I'm not going to do it. The doors have to be absolutely closed and padlocked before I change my mind on this. So I'm in for the long haul, and I'm just so grateful that you've been journeying with me, listening to me over these last couple of conventions, praying this into being, and also financially contributing. And last year I said to you, look, we go to the hole in the wall, the ATM, and we get out our bundle of green notes. And I said, would you consider doing an AP, an automatic payment, of one green one once a month for a year. And some of you really responded. Thank you so much. And so, but you know what I notice? These days they're giving you pink ones, and the pink ones are $50. <laughs> so, so maybe you just might consider doing something, you know, even once a week, once a fortnight, once a month, whatever you might allow, because we're going to need to feed ourselves, put gas in the car, and we'll be so grateful for some material help. AP forms are right uh, are there and you can fill them down there, fill up the forms um, with me today. And the last thing is, we need help in terms of people's talents. We're going to need tradies, we're hoping to have some bees going, we're hoping to have a greenhouse, we're hoping to plant trees, we're hoping to have a beautiful garden. We want this to be a place of peace and beauty and a, a place of refuge for the troubled soul. So. I know there are builders and tradies and gardeners and landscapers and if you can help at all, please come and talk to me. So we're aiming to open in the next couple of months subject to the address being finalised. If you can help in any way, come and see me. Thank you so much. Um, you've been awesome over these last few years. And would you just end with, by praying with me? Let's pray to Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Medjugorje, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, pray for us. Saint Philomena, powerful with God and miracle worker. Thank you. God bless.